So a recent update to Bloxy Pro brought with it a really, really powerful set of tools. And in this video, I wanna quickly show you how to get started using them and some of the features they bring with it. What is it? Well, it's the ability now to go ahead and create our custom archive and single templates. If you take a look, released April the 21st, so very, very recently, and we now have these two key options, single template builder and archive template builder. The power comes in with all the conditions we can set. So how do we go about using it? Let's take a look right now. Well, first of all, this is an example of what we'll be doing in this video. You can see this is a Bloxy page, this is an archive template, and this is the standard one that comes with one of the pre-built templates. As you can see, we've got a typical looking layout. Things are broken down into various different sections, and we've broken things down even further into different taxonomies or different categories. You can see this is showing us pretty much everything. However, if we go into the tutorials subcategory, you see we now have a slightly different layout. These cards are laid out differently. This is where we've created a custom template. Now, if we go back out of this, and we're gonna take a look at something like Uncategorized, which is another subcategory, you can see that still follows exactly the same design ethos as the first one. So we've applied this on a very macro level, but you can get broad, you can get really specific. So let's take a look at how to do that. So logging into the WordPress dashboard, let's hop over into Bloxy and go into the content blocks. Like I say, this is a pro feature, so you do need pro. Let's open that up and you can see there's my custom archive template. Okay, so before we go take a look at editing this, the first thing I wanna do is just quickly show you how you'll go about choosing what template and so on to create. There's a new feature. So what we do is click on add new in the content block section and you see we now have a third option, which is the custom template. We select that choose the type of template we want to create. In this example, we've got archive template and single template. Choose whichever one is applicable. We'll choose archive template, give it a name. Once you've done that, you're going to simply click on create content block. And there's your content block ready to start working with. That's how easy it is. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And now let's just remove that. We're going to take a look at the one that I created earlier. So let's just delete this and just empty our trash. Okay, and we're now back with our full list of content blocks tells us under the conditions this is applied to be in an archive and only inside the ID of tutorials, which is a specific taxonomy. So let's open this up and take a look at what's going on. So first of all, let's take a look at the conditions that allow us to specify exactly where we want this template to take effect. First of all, inside the normal editor in Gutenberg, if we pop over to the right-hand side, we need just to make sure that we've got the Bloxy settings open. That's this Bloxy child page settings or Bloxy settings. If you don't, if you have something like this enabled or stackable or whatever, simply click on that and that'll open up the conditions and everything to do with working inside the Bloxy editor. You can see we've got the display conditions and we can use display conditions and we can use user conditions. So we can not only apply this to various different categories or block it from categories and pages and posts, we can also apply it based upon whether a user is logged in, logged out, or of a specific user role. And we can stack all these on top of each other to get really granular. Okay, so you can see at the moment I've set this to exclude all post archives except for a specific taxonomy ID of tutorials. Let's open this up. You can see we've got a ton of options inside here. We can do entire website, archives, posts, post tags, landing page archives, specifics, so post IDs, page IDs, custom posts, and so on, right the way down to other specific pages like your 404 page, search page, and so on. We leave that as it is. Then you can choose again to include or exclude. In this example, we've got taxonomy IDs. We're stacking two different conditions on top of each other. And then finally we choose, once we've chosen that taxonomy ID, we just choose what taxonomy it is we want to apply it to. So conditional based options. You then got the add user conditions if you want to use these. So we can click on that, again, include and exclude, and we can choose whether the user's logged in, logged out, whether they're a specific user role, even including custom roles. You can see I've got this FTP manager, customer, shop manager, and so on. So we can use those as well. And we've also got options like, is this the post author? So a lot of really cool options to build this up. For this example, we're just gonna keep it to what I'd set up originally, just to show it in that taxonomy ID of tutorials. So with that being said, this is our template. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that and start from scratch. But what we've got is we're basically not editing or creating the actual archive, we're creating the item, the loop items design. So if we swap back over to the page, 
This is basically what we're doing. You can see each one of these is using the same design, but the information is different. That because we're just referencing dynamic information from the post listing. And then this is using the WordPress loop to output all this information. So we're effectively designing just this card design. So let's hop back over. Let's delete what we have inside here and let's go ahead and recreate this from scratch to show you how you can use tools to build things up. Now for this example, we're using Stackable Pro because we can use dynamic content, but you can use any kind of tool that allows you to use dynamic content. That could be a block level tool or it could be something like Elemental Pro. Options are out there for you. So for this example, like I say, we're going to be using Stackable Pro. So let's go ahead and start building things. So the first thing you want to go ahead and add is going to be a column. Now, anything that's got this sort of like purpley orange kind of gradient color, those icons are stackable or stackable pro options. And I'll only be using those in this particular example for that dynamic data. So let's choose that option. We'll set this to be just one column and one row. And there we go. We've set things up. The nice thing is inside blocks, if we take a look on the right hand side where our display conditions are, if we come out to the bottom, you can see we've got the editor card width. This just allows us when we're working inside you to choose how we want to preview this. So if we're dealing with single cards that are stacked on top of each other, like we've just seen, then we can set this to small. However, we could be doing things on a horizontal basis, image to the left, for example, or load of information to the right hand side, which point custom or medium may be a better option so you get a better visual representation of it you've also got options then to choose what you want to use for the dynamic data preview which can be incredibly handy just to make sure you're pulling data in from the relevant category post page whatever it is you're working with let's leave that set to what it was originally set it back to small now let's go ahead and start creating things we're going to open up the panel from the left hand side just so we can see how things are stacking let's go ahead and add our first block in we're going to choose this image so we're going to select that. Again, this is a stackable option. So once that's selected, we now need to come over to the right-hand side, click the cog icon to open up the settings. Or alternatively, you can simply click on the three dots and say show more settings or use the keyboard shortcut. With that being done, we can now go ahead and use dynamic data. So we're going to be pulling in information for the featured image. So we're going to click on this little database icon. Current post is perfectly fine. We'll select that if it's not already selected. And then from the fields, we're going to go ahead and choose the field that we want. And as you can see, there's a ton of dynamic data inside you. Again, if you're coming from something like Elemental Pro working with dynamic data, this is all going to feel incredibly familiar to you. Lots of the same options are inside there. So you can see if we scroll through, we've got normal post information. We've got author information, comments, media, and detected custom fields. So if you're using something like advanced custom fields, that information will be listed inside you. If you're using WooCommerce, Lots of the dynamic data can be pulled in and referenced inside your designs. For this, though, we're going to use the featured image URL. We can set the image size. We'll set this to be large, and we're going to click on Apply. And there's our featured image. We're using that preview, so you can change this over if you want to, simply by coming back over to the blocks, the options, and choosing something different from the dynamic content preview. Okay, so that's the first section created. Let's go ahead and add a new item in. So we're going to add a new option where this time we're going to grab the heading we're going to use this to create the title now at the moment this isn't sitting inside our container so we simply need to drag that and position that where we want which is inside the column just to make sure we can then style the column and apply whatever style we want with everything contained inside it okay so now what we need to do is click on the dynamic fields option in the same way we did for the featured image click on there current post is perfectly fine click on fields choose post title we can say we want to show this as a link so it becomes clickable. And if you want to have this open up in a new tab, you can do that. We'll leave it as it is and click apply. That now pulls in the text. So we can go ahead and style that. We'll take a look at that in a moment though. Next up, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to add a new block in. This time we're going to choose the text option. Again, sticking with the stackable pro options. Choose the dynamic option, current post. And we're going to come down and we choose post excerpt. We'll set this to be around 30 characters or 30 words, I should say. Now, the nice thing with this is even if you don't use the WordPress post excerpt, you're just typing straight into the normal editor. This will fall back to that by default and replace the blank excerpt with the first 30 words or whatever you set it to of your actual article. So you don't end up with just blank space. Hit apply on there. You can see that now drops the information in. Again, we just need to make sure this is in the right location. We'll drop that inside there. And now we've got a couple more things to do. We want to put the category that this particular post is in. So to do that, again, we're going to do the same thing. We'll click on plus, choose the option for text, choose the dynamic option, current post, that's fine. 
and we're going to come down we're going to choose post taxonomy we'll click on that we can choose then whether we want to use tags categories or any of the other options available categories is perfectly fine we're going to display all the values because you can have a post in multiple different categories so that's perfectly fine and then we can change the delimiter so we're going to say we want to put in this dash and hit apply and there we go there's our categories again let's just adjust the positioning of this to make sure everything is where we want it we're going to place this between the header and the actual uh, ex excerpt just for making it a little bit nicer and neater and then finally we've got one more option to insert let's get rid of this extra paragraph let's go ahead now and add a new button in so we're going to search for button we'll choose this buttons option you can see that now puts a button group in we'll position that at the bottom and we're going to go ahead select our button click on our link option we have our database icon one more time so we can select that current post change that over now to post URL and that button now has been linked to the post and we can go take a look at the single post so all we need to do is go and change the text and say read article we'll change the colors on this we'll say the button color is going to be black and we'll set the text to be white so it stands out of our design and we have basically created what we needed so now because we've got everything set up inside here we can go ahead and customize the look and feel so for example let's go and choose our heading Let's set this to be something like H4, so it's a little bit lower case, a little bit smaller in our design. If we want to adjust the sizing, we can do that. So we can say we want to override the default setting and set that to be, let's just say, 22 in this example. Come down to typography settings. You can adjust things like the weight on there. So you can customize this however you see fit. We're going to come back into our column or our container. And inside there, we're just going to go into our block. We're going to apply a little bit of shadow around this. So I'm not going to worry too much about making this all nice and tidy. We're more interested in just setting things so you can see how everything looks. Now, obviously, we need to adjust the spacing and so on in there. So I'll quickly go ahead and do that in the first item, and then I'll do it behind the scenes so you're going to watch me doing it. So what we need to do is select the heading in this example, go to our block, into our size and spacing, and inside there we can adjust our paddings, and we can set those to be 30 pixels, to the left and right to give us a little bit of breathing room and if we want to adjust the horizontal spacing vertical space on any of this we can do that so i'm going to quickly do the rest of these and then we'll come back and take a look at how this all looks okay so there's all the styling done everything set up we'll click on update on there and now we can go ahead and take a look at this to make sure everything is working the way we expect so let's hop back over there's our normal archive page let's go into our tutorials which is our custom archive and there we go there's our custom design so you can see our fonts have changed all the different information has changed. We can click and go and take a look at our article, those kinds of things. And if we want to, we can come back in and make changes and have that reflect on everything we've done. So let's come back in here. Let's go and select our button. Let's change that background color this time to red. Click on update on there. Hop back over and refresh. And you see now we've just changed all those different card designs. So now when we change that color, if we go ahead and click on read article, that will take us into the single post template and we can see the actual article in full detail. Again, you have full control over customizing these in exactly the same way that I've just shown you. So you can have custom unique archive layouts, custom card layouts. You can have custom single post templates. If you create custom post types, you can simply use the Bloxy customizer, the theme customizer, to create custom different layouts. So you can have horizontal or vertical layouts with different row and column counts on any of your different designs to get truly unique designs. Now, this is just showing you the basics of what you can do, but combining a tool like Stackable Pro or any of the block-based builders that allow you to add in dynamic data or a tool like Elementor Pro to pull in dynamic data, you can really get creative. This simplifies your overall stack. Using a tool like Bloxy gives you header and foot builders and tons of great options. Combine it with something like this and you open up even more options for creating custom sites. Well, I hope you found this useful. All the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. And until next time, take care.